All right, what is up guys? <clears throat> Last time I did a video about the DJI Mavic Pro, I was I was in Quebec, Canada. That was only a couple of months ago. And now I am in Baja, California, just north of the town of Ensenada. As some of you guys know, I travel full time with my family. So we uh, spent the summer up in Canada and now we're spending the next month or so down in uh, the Baja Peninsula before we get back to California for uh, the holidays to see our family. So a lot has happened in the last couple months, specifically in the drone market. The DJI Mavic was released a week after the GoPro Karma and there's been some difficulties for both companies. First of all, the GoPro Karma was just recalled every single unit that was sold they sold I believe about 2,500 units all of them got recalled and there is no time frame on when they will re-release it there is no replacement plan for the recalled units so they've essentially took them all back and what they're gonna do with it is still yet to be known the DJI Maverick on the other hand they have had really a lot of issues fulfilling the orders I would say the reception of the product has been overwhelmingly positive up until the fulfillment process I personally ordered one but because I travel full-time I had a small window to get it into my hands as I'm driving through California and it didn't happen even though it had been about a month since I ordered it there was a small window if I didn't get it, I was just going to have to cancel because I won't be back until January, late December, January. So I ended up canceling my Mavic Pro. But uh, there's some more to think about now because today DJI just announced a couple of new drones. They're successors to some of the existing products rather than a new item like the Mavic Pro. They announced the DJI Inspire 2, which is their high-end professional drone. But in this video, I'm going to talk more specifically about the other one, which is the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Let me go through some specs for you. Obviously, it was just released today. I do not have a unit, and I don't know if I will be getting one. One of the big features in the Phantom 4 Pro versus the regular Phantom 4 is now there are rear and side obstacle avoidance sensors. The ones in the rear are just like the ones in the front. They're dual optical sensors. And the ones on the side are infrared sensors. So instead of just being able to detect forward obstacles, now it can detect lateral and rear obstacles. So that's gonna make people who buy this drone a lot more comfortable in flying in tight spaces. The other biggest feature that they announced is the new image sensor in the camera. They upgraded it from a one over two third inch sensor to a full one inch sensor. Instead of it being a 12 megapixel sensor, it's now a 20 megapixel sensor. And it's not just the image sensor that they upgraded, they've actually upgraded the entire camera system. The 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor now has 11.6 stops of dynamic range, which is going to make high contrast shots a lot easier to pull details out of the dark areas. You won't have to worry about exposing for just the bright or just the dark. You're going to be able to get more information in that same image. It now has a mechanical shutter. It's not just an electronic shutter. The mechanical shutter will be used for taking stills. And because of a mechanical shutter, the advantage there is that when you're moving fast, if you have a digital camera with an electronic shutter or if you use it uh, in your mobile phones or maybe in your current Phantom 4, you'll notice there is uh, an effect called rolling shutter. So essentially what happens is when you're moving fast, Fast, let's say you're going sideways and there are vertical lines that you're sort of flying past those vertical lines will become skewed like this and that's a rolling shutter effect a mechanical shutter is not going to have that so that's a new feature and it's also now the the aperture is now a variable f 2.8 to f 11 meaning that f 2.8 is the widest open aperture and it can close down to f 11 It'll let you film in really bright environments without increasing that uh, shutter speed really high. So in the past, if you wanted to, let's say, film a 30 frames per second video, ideally you want your shutter speed to be about double that, which is 1 60th of a second. 
with the Fix F 2.8 big aperture, uh, you're not going to be able to do that without using ND filters. Now you can close that aperture down so that you don't have to use ND filters to get the right, the right shutter speed. With the image sensor and the image processing, you can now do 14 frames per second of burst mode that'll shoot it in full 20 megapixels using Adobe DNG RAW. Slightly narrower field of view, going down from 94 degrees field of view to about 84 degrees. 10% uh, more battery capacity. You're going from 5350 milliamp hour battery to 5870 milliamp hour battery. That'll bring the flight time up to just about 30 minutes. Well, without gaining a lot of weight. The battery, the new battery weighs 468 grams versus the old one weighing 462 grams. So only six grams of weight increase gives you 10% more battery capacity. You can also now do with that new image processor and image sensor, you can now do 4K 60 frames per second video. And instead of just having H.264 MPEG-4 compression, they now have H.265, which is higher compression and better quality compression. And that is also new to the Phantom 4 series. The base price on the Phantom 4 Pro is $14.99, and that is without the 5.5 inch built-in monitor. To get the monitor, you have to go to the Phantom 4 Pro Plus, and that'll cost you $17.99. And some of the software features, what they've done is they've taken some of the new features that were built into the Mavic Pro and they included in the new Phantom 4 Pro. A couple of new smart modes like Spotlight. And basically what that means is that Spotlight will let your camera focus in on uh, an object in the scene and then you can fly all around it and the camera will focus, will keep that object in the center as you fly about. Also profile mode which is, comes in really handy with a rolling shutter, with a mechanical shutter that gets rid of the rolling shutter. So as you're, as you're filming an object going in a direction, you can fly alongside of it, looking sideways at that object, like a car or a motorcycle or a bicycle or anything like that. They're using some new materials in the drone itself to bring the weight down. So even though they added all these new sensors and these new features, they have only added eight grams to the total airframe weight, which is pretty great. Here's some of the biggest reasons I think somebody should upgrade to the Phantom 4 Pro, if you already have the Phantom 4. Obviously, for the enhanced obstacle avoidance, for greater safety, if you're flying in indoor areas a lot or in tight spaces a lot, uh, you can really appreciate the rear and sideways obstacle avoidance. You don't have to think about it as much. It's not gonna be as nerve-wracking for you to, to, to film in those those places. You're gonna have a bigger and better image sensor for greater dynamic range. So if you're pushing the existing sensor on your Phantom 4 already, you're gonna really appreciate this bigger sensor that lets in more light, greater dynamic range, and also lets you shoot 4K 60 frames per second. So if that's something that you're looking for, you're definitely gonna to wanna to upgrade to this. The variable aperture, like I mentioned earlier, will let you shoot um, during brighter days and sunnier days without having to use an ND filter. What kind of people need this? Personally, I'm not going to upgrade. I don't shoot a lot of 4K. The existing Phantom 4 has a data rate of 60 megabits per second, which personally, by looking at the image quality, 60 megabits is a bit too low for 4K 30 frames video. The higher data rate, bumping up to 100 megabits, is going to make that image quality a lot better. It's going to be noticeably better, especially with that new H.265 uh, codec image compression. And also, if you're flying frequently in very crowded areas when it comes to radio frequencies, meaning a lot of cell towers, a lot of Wi-Fi, in cities where there's a lot of radio congestion, the new Phantom 4 Pro also has not just 2.4 gigahertz for the radio transmission and reception, it can now switch back and forth between 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. It's going to automatically find a cleaner signal, so you can have less interference, better quality image. If that's you, you may want to consider upgrading. Some of these features are more higher end 
for maybe independent filmmakers on a budget. You don't want to quite step up to an Inspire series. You like maybe the size and and um, portability of the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4 Pro is probably going to be for you. The type of aerial shooting that I do is basically for this vlog, for this YouTube channel. I care more about portability, ease of use, and speed than quality. I shoot almost always in 1080p. I don't do a lot of post-production. I take the footage more or less exactly out of the camera, out of the drone, and I use it to edit in my, in my vlogs, in my YouTube videos. I'm still personally going to get the Mavic Pro because the portability of the Mavic Pro is more desirable for me. The higher capacity battery, 10% more, looks to be the same form factor as the existing Phantom 4 battery. So I'm assuming that you're going to be able to use that new battery in, in existing Phantom 4s, not just Phantom 4 Pros. It doesn't specifically say that yet on their website, but it does say this battery is for the Phantom 4 series of drones. So I'm hoping that's the case. It's the same price. An extra battery is $169 for the extended capacity or the regular capacity. Also, I'm interested in seeing if that software upgrade that allows you to have spotlight and profile smart modes, if that will translate down to the standard Phantom 4. And those are really nice modes to have. And if it's just software that enables that, I would really like to see that in the Phantom 4 as well without having to buy the Phantom 4 Plus or the Phantom 4 Pro to get it. Knowing that the Mavic Pro has had production issues in fulfilling orders, and I'm wondering by releasing two new drones like they did today, the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire 2, will they have production capacity issues? If somebody orders one of these, will it be delayed? Right now it's saying three to five weeks for them to deliver the Phantom 4 Pro if you made an order. I'm hoping that they have the production issue taken care of and they will actually start shipping in that three to five week period. So we'll see about that. I will be back in California end of December and I'm hoping by then the Mavic Pros will be in stores and I'll just be able to go pick one up. When the Mavic Pro first came out, a lot of people were wondering, wow, there's a lot of overlap between the Mavic Pro and the Phantom 4. What are they going to do? They're using the same size image sensor. It takes roughly about the same type of videos for such a small compact size and $100 less. Even though they dropped the Phantom 4 to $1,100, the Mavic Pro is only $1,000. So why would anybody buy the Phantom 4? So the Phantom 4 Pro sort of answers that question. And now the Phantom 4 Pro has elevated the Phantom 4 series up to another level that the Mavic Pro is unable to touch. So now there's, again, more delineation between the two products. So I'm hopeful that these new hardware features, these hardware upgrades that they made into the Phantom 4 Pro is what we can expect for the next version of the Mavic Pro. Even though the Mavic Pro just came out, I'm fairly sure a year from now there will be a Mavic Pro 2. Maybe they'll be able to put the one inch sensor into that. I'm not sure if that's physically possible, but let's definitely hope that they're gonna have more than just four obstacle avoidance in the Mavic Pro successor next year. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to being able to see it in stores, being able to play with it. And if you guys have the Mavic Pro or the Phantom 4, let me know in the comments if you plan to upgrade. Thanks for watching. Please comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.